Hey everybody. Well, it's still too cold here in Wyoming to go riding, so today I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a quick review on this uh, backpack. Now this is an important pack to me. I spend a better fair amount of time working on an ambulance service. So, uh, I feel fairly obligated to stop and help people when I find them hurt. And then I would also like to make sure I have the tools that I need when I'm, when I'm hurt. So, I want to cover what's called an IFAC. An IFAC stands for an Individual First Aid Kit. An Individual First Aid Kit is on my bike is this one right here. Just a basic little bag. It's got all the essentials to stop bleeding, to take care of someone who can't breathe properly, and to be able to hopefully avoid some of the life-threatening stuff that can happen uh, out on the trail. And it will allow me to get someone to help as soon as possible. And that might even be myself. So if you have the ability, I would highly recommend get a small bright colored bag, label it somehow that it's a medical or first aid kit bag, and place it somewhere where anybody can get to it. That way, if they find you down, they have those essentials, and you'll have them quick and easy access if you find somebody down on the trail. So, attached to this is a basic tactical backpack. This is a cheap one. Uh, these are copies of your tactical backpacks you find that are hundreds of dollars. Uh, this is a cheap knockoff garbage one, uh, Chinese whatever. I mean, all the zippers break really easily on this. Um, but I trash these really badly. You know, this one's already getting wore out, um, and I've only had it about a year. Uh, and so I don't buy the expensive ones because I know I'm going to just totally destroy them. This stays on my bike at all times, whether I'm riding in the city or wherever it might be. I don't care if it gets stolen because it's got maybe 30, 40 bucks worth of stuff in it. And the only time I uh, would really miss it from getting stolen is if I got hurt. So uh, now I have the ability, of course, to pack a bunch of this on there, but it goes on the tail of my bag, as you can see in this picture. So I'm just going to quickly go through this bag and show you what I have. So this, uh, the Mole, or however you call it, the Molex or Mole, is these straps that come across to the, or webbing, and they're sewn every few inches. And essentially, the way that works, if you can see it here, is, is uh, like this bag here, you can see that strap going through there. Um, that allows you to attach any number of different uh, uh, accessory pouches and things like that. Uh, they're actually designed for like gun cases and, and, and clips for, for uh, pistols and stuff like that. But uh, uh, this allows this bag to attach really easily on the outside. And I've never had it come off, whether it's from hiking or from uh, uh, riding down the trail. And I usually just throw this right on the tail there, across the, my rock straps, across the back, and they hold really, really well. But this thing can be accessed right on top really easily, and it opens right up like this, and it allows easy access to all the supplies and tools that are in this bag. So I'm going to quickly cover what I have in here. It's just pretty simple. You're going to have a uh, bunch of gloves. This will be your, your like nitrile or surgical gloves. I usually keep at least two or three pair in here, if not more, and I keep a size large. That tends to be the most universal in size, uh, even though I normally carry, uh, wear a medium. I carry large in here just so other people can also wear these as well. And then I have a uh, roll of tape, just your basic medical tape, uh, and you want the kind that will stick to a wet condition because people that are really hurt are going to be sweaty or they're going to be bloody and you want it to be able to stick to that. I've got a piece of compressed gauze. This, is, uh, this compressed gauze is really small, but it actually is a very large piece of uh, gauze and it allows it to, you can actually make a sling out of this. Uh, like a, what's called a cravat or a triangular bandage, so it has that ability. This little packet right here is actually lubricating jelly, and the reason that's in there is for this, which is what's called an NPA or a nasopharyngeal airway. NPAs or nasopharyngeal airways will, if someone's got major facial trauma, they say they smack their bars really hard or a rock or whatever it might be, and they didn't have a full face shield on, uh, then I can use this to help secure their airway and get better oxygen down into their airway there. Uh, it is not for in the mouth, it's in for the nose, and it can be put on someone who is conscious. They're not going to like me very much, but they'll survive. Uh, and then I keep a pair of uh, scissors here. These are uh, medical shears. And then I keep a, a pair of large, uh, these are large uh, sterile dressings, usually two or three of those. And then I have what's called a uh, chest seal. 
And these are, these are what's called an occlusive dressing is the more technical term for it. But essentially what this is, is this is a bandage that gives you the ability to be able to let air out, but not let air in. It essentially has a check valve in there. The reason this is important, if you have a chest wound, let's say a stick goes into your chest, uh, then what can happen is, is you can actually get what's called a sucking chest wound. Sucking chest wound sucks in air, creates pressure, air pressure outside your lungs, and can collapse your lungs and can become a life-threatening problem. This will help mitigate some of those issues and get someone to help a little quicker. Then I'm going to carry my blood or hemorrhaging tools. This is just three tools. Two of those are gauze. One is what's called a hemostatic gauze or a quick clot gauze. And this has a hemostatic agent in it. So it's gauze, it's just cloth. But impregnated into that cloth is a hemostatic agent, meaning it's going to clot the blood very quickly. And so that will work great for things like gunshot wounds or for uh, punctures. And that can save someone from bleeding out. This here is a compression bandage. It does not have the, uh, the hemostatic agent in it. However, these can be used together. Uh, but this has the compression capability, so it has an elastic uh, feature to it, and it's in a roll. So I can, I can apply some of this gauze to someone's arm and then wrap it very tightly to apply direct pressure to that wound and keep that from bleeding as well. And then the final thing I have, which is if these two do not work, then I have this. This is called a cat tourniquet. There's lots of options for tourniquets. Uh, the main two you really want to stick to when it comes to what we do is either a cap tourniquet or a SWAT T. Both of them require training, both of them are very effective, and both of them are very good to have. However, uh, the, the procedure for putting these on and the reasons you would put them on has changed over the last few years. So, with this first aid kit, one thing that you have to have with you that you don't have in this kit is your brain. You've got to get the training to use this stuff. So, Stop the Bleed, and I'll put a link down in the description to a Stop the Bleed website, is a major campaign going on in this country right now and throughout the world. And the, the goal is to make sure that no one bleeds to death. There is no excuse for death as a result of someone not obtaining simple gauze and being able to apply direct pressure and to stop the bleeding. So the Stop the Bleed campaign is really important. I'll leave some links there. But along with this first aid kit, you and everyone you know needs to have a first aid training course. I offer these courses for free. Anytime uh, anyone wants to contact me, we can set that up. Um, but you need to learn how to use these things so when the time comes that you need to use them, you know how to. That can make the difference between life and death, and it certainly can make the difference between you feeling helpless and you being able to make a big difference in someone's life. So I hope this was helpful for you. I'll go through what's in the rest of my pack on another video. Uh, hope you have a great day. Stay safe and keep writing.